Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A new spoiler review of episode four of Moon Knight, the new MCU Disney Plus show. My name is Max Zinnerberg. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. I do movie reviews, these type of TV show reviews, streaming platform reviews, movie rankings, and box office breakdown show every single Monday. So please subscribe, ring the bell. If you're new to the channel, I break down Moon Knight every single Wednesday here on the channel. I've done the previous three episodes, and now I got two more weeks after this doing Moon Knight. So please ring that bell to so notify when these Moon Knight videos drop. Please like the video, guys. The thumbs up. That is probably the most supportive thing you guys can do for the channel. It uh, helps the algorithm out so more people can check out this video, get recommended if you want a lot more Moon Knight. And comment down below. Let me know your thoughts of Moon Knight. We have now caught up with the critics with early access. What are your bold predictions for the last two episodes? Are you nervous that six episodes is not enough? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's talk about episode four. So if you need the channel, I'm basically just break down my general thoughts. This is all spoilers. So if you've not seen episode four or episodes one through three, watch the, those episodes, come back, look at my videos, and then uh, let's get into it. So this is a uh, Steven is now back in control for the majority of this episode, not the entirety. Um, but on this journey, um, obviously, after, after what happened at the end of episode three, where Steven and, you know, Kanju moved the, the, did the whole thing in the sky, which is now allowing Steven and Layla to go after Ahmet's uh, tomb, just like um, Hero is played by Ethan Hawke. So we have kind of this back and forth between Steven and Layla, um, which was really fun to watch. There's a scene where Layla, uh, you know, Mark, uh, Steven's passed out from what happened at the end of last week, and there's no more suit. Because there's no Kanju, there's no Mr. Knight, there's no Moon Knight, there's no any costume. It's just... This episode was the first episode with no Moon Knight. It was literally just the dual personalities of Steven and Mark, um, which for me was fine. I know a lot of people out there who have been really pissed off at the show has not been very much Moon Knight costume heavy are probably going to hate this episode just with that fact alone. But I'm so enthralled with this story and these two great, I mean, not just two, but the dual personality performance from Oscar Isaac is so excellent. I think this might be my favorite Oscar Isaac performance of the entire season this episode. I think May Callumway as Layla is fantastic, a lovely addition. And she doesn't just feel like she's just the, 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 the girlfriend or the wife in distress in the show. She feels like an equal to Mark and Steven, which is why she's a really unique character in the show. She's not a forgotten stereotypical wife of the superhero type character. Um, and Ethan Hawke does a couple of really nice stuff in this episode, especially in the afterlife stuff as Arthur Harrow. Um, we kind of, it was kind of hinted at last week that maybe Steven had a thing for Layla. Obviously, Mark is now not in control. And Mark wants to be in control. And Steven's like, I just can't give up control. And then Steven goes for the kiss. And then he kind of tells right before, after Layla goes for the kiss, Steven's like, the reason why Mark's been not left you is because he doesn't want, he wants to keep Kanju as far away from you. Um, and then Steven, they go for the kiss. It's all very, really cute. It's a really great performance from Oscar Isaac. That he does feel like a completely different person at the same time being the same body, same per being like technically the same person, but you know what I mean? Not, and that's the specialness of what this performance is for Oscar Isaac. He just is one of the best actors working today. And this is probably his best role he's ever had in his career. Fun to watch the back and forth. And the fact that Steven does feel like a completely separate person from Mark, which is why the show works. Um, so Stephen and Layla go into the finding the tomb. And that's where they run to this mummified creature, which goes after Layla. Some great special effects, great sound effects of this like cackling creature, kind of like a couple of nice jump scares, just a real creepy vibe to this episode that I really dug. Mix it with some really pleasant comedy from Steven, which has been one of my favorite aspects of the show. Um, but after Layla fights off this thing, Harrow is right there. And Harrow's like, has he still not told you? And Layla's kind of just done with it. And then Harrow says something that, to, that her dad always told her. And then this led to, lead to Layla learning that Mark was there, uh, has something to do with her father's death. Now, Harrow doesn't go very specific about it. It's only specific when Layla asks, um, when Mark takes over the body. But before we get to that, so basically Layla learns that Mark was basically there when her dad died. That's where it is right there. Then we go off to Stephen, and Stephen finds the tomb of Alexander the Great. 
um, which was a hilarious, dark, and creepy scene where you see Alexander the Great. I mean, that's one of the most famous historical figures of all time. And Mark, I mean, Stephen has to rip open his jaw and reach in there. And Mark's like egging him on. And, and Stephen keeps saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Gray. I'm sorry, Mr. Gray. It's just hilarious comedy between really both the characters. And because it, we learned that Alexander was the voice of really the first avatar, I believe if I'm not mistaken, the first avatar for Ahmed and was the voice of Ahmed. So he goes and reaches and he finds something. And that's where kind of Layla shows up. And Stephen's like, oh, I found it, I found it. We know where to go. And Layla's just pissed off. And then Mark does take over the body. And Mark was basically like, I wasn't the one who killed him. But then she was like, you, you knew the person who killed him and did nothing about it. And Mark did not. It was Mark's partner who's the one who killed him, knew it was going to happen, and Mark did nothing. And then, you know, Mark, obviously, he's very, you can tell these characters are very in love with Layla. And Layla's like, oh, that's the reason why we met. You know, that's the reason why you met me and I met you is because of this whole situation. Um, so it kind of gets pretty sad. This is where Arthur Harrow then meets up with our characters. Um, Layla, I believe, yeah, Layla escapes this whole situation. We'll see if we ever get back to this aspect of the show. I think we will. But shockingly, Harrow shoots uh, Mark twice in the chest, like dead in the chest. He falls into the water and it feels like it's basically like the afterlife that Mark goes into. He has no idea where he is. He sees Layla in this institute helping him out. And then he has his therapist is Harrow uh, with Ethan Hawke having a brand new look, which was really smart. Um, it just put you in a loop of what is going on. Was the, was the reality before this not reality? Is this the true reality? I just believe it's the afterlife and Mark will find his way out of the afterlife. Um, we shall see. So after Mark and his hero, their entanglement ends, Mark runs into a room and coming out of this tomb is Steven. So as you can see behind me, I got, I cut that picture. Mark and Steven are now two separate people in the afterlife. And the acting continues to be spectacular when the two of them are on screen. The fact that they hug each other right away, um, fascinating stuff. So Steven and Mark are two separate people. They're walking in, they walk past another tomb that's shaking, just like Steven does. They are seriously hinting at Jake, who is the third personality in the comic books. Um, after last week, he was basically the one, there's a clearly a third personality who's the one killing all those people in the last episode because Mark wasn't there and Steven wasn't the one doing it. So they go past that one for some reason. We'll, they'll have to obviously have to be a big thing. And after walking through the hallway, this like hippopotamus creature says hi. Both Oscar Isaacs go crazy in different ways and the episode ends, leaving us with no idea what to expect in the last two episodes. Now, I feel I love this show. So far for me, this, this is probably my favorite MCU show so far. Now, a lot of people are not on that side, especially people who love the Moon Knight character. I am loving the story and not needing a, su a superhero costume to get me interested in the show. Um, and yes, there was not a lot of action here, but I'm so fascinated in the characters, the performances, and really the world building surrounding it, where it truly does feel like its own thing. But it doesn't, what, if you didn't know if it was in the MCU, you just wouldn't know. And I find that really interesting. I am slightly nervous with these MCU shows that they are six episodes. We've had all these circumstances, I think every TV show so far, where the show feels excellent and then sometimes shows take big dips in the last two episodes because they don't have enough of two episodes. Now, because I have no idea what to expect next, I really don't know if I should be worried that there are two, two episodes left. There is obviously a lot to wrap up. Um, because I think I heard, a, I think it was not a rumor, maybe it was confirmed that Moon Knight is a one and done series. So they do have a lot to wrap up in two episodes of the show. All the episodes have really been 52 minutes with credits, so really like 48 uh, without. Um, there is time to get stuff done. I am slightly worried because uh, the Marvel Disney Plus shows do have a trend of rushing through the last two episodes of series because uh, it's not a lot of episodes and need to get everything done. It kind of felt like that with like kind of Hawkeye, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and even WandaVision, which I show I loved, did have issues of trying to rush through the last couple of episodes because of how short the season is. So I'm hopeful 
that Moon Knight will not turn into that. I am interested if we are stuck here the rest of the season, if we go back, I think we'll go back to the real world. Maybe not this episode, but at least the finale episode. But I am actually loving Moon Knight. I'm way more positive than most people. Can't wait to talk about it with you guys the next two weeks. Let me know your predictions in the comment section down below. Please like the video, subscribe. Other videos coming down the pipeline here on the show. This past Monday, I did a box office breakdown show. My next video is tomorrow, Thursday, the 21st. You'll get my review, non-spoiler, of the new DreamWorks animated film, The Bad Guys. Uh, then Monday, you will get my, uh, uh, my box office breakdown show. And then back here on Wednesday, for the fifth episode of Moon Knight, you'll get my spoiler breakdown of that episode. So please, guys, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things. I'll see you guys soon.